The drilling rig has bored its way through countless economic cycles in the same way it has drilled through the earth in its long history. Thousands of pounds of steel driving down, rooted in a history of the people who call Western Canada home. The derricks have changed, but the drive remains the same. A history of technology, economic cycles, and human relationships. A tradition of opportunity. The first boom in the modern generation of drilling happened 150 years ago, with the first oil rigs built in North America to handle the burgeoning kerosene trade. In the early 1900s, when oil was discovered in Turner Valley, Alberta, the boom seemed unstoppable. Some 226 oil mining companies were registered in Calgary in 1914. That number plummeted to 21 only three years later. At the cost of safety, people seized upon the chance to chase dreams that more often than not disappeared down the holes they drilled. You look at the pictures of old and the guys are wearing floppy fedoras, they're not wearing safety glasses, coveralls, safety boots, there's chains flying all over the place, there's ropes flying all over the place, there's no chain guards, there's no gloves, there's no safety to speak of. Less than a century later, Akita's strong record demonstrates an entirely new concept of safety. A lot of organizations uh, have developed what they call behavior-based programs, uh, behavior-based safety. People are what you have to target. So people's attitudes, people's behaviors, empowering people, uh, making people feel positive in that environment, and also feeling positive towards the organization as a whole. But reality safety is, needs to be what you, what you do every day, how you go about your business. Safe procedures lead to safe work, they lead to safe results. In today's world, safety is such a focus and needs to be such a focus that the people that work out there, they understand the equipment they're working on, they understand that they're working in a safe environment. Long gone are the days when this industry is so rough and tumble like uh, we used to hear about. Maybe some people might have romanced about that. We don't romance about that anymore. So everything we do has to be done in a first-class professional manner. If you don't do that, you won't survive. The Depression hit Canada hard. And when the oil reserves dried up in Turner Valley, the boom came to an end. But while the boom ended, those people who looked for a longer commitment continued, positioning themselves to take advantage of every economic turn. Drilling continued, and Ted Link's exploration in the Mackenzie Delta produced promising results. Enough that a refinery was built in Norman Wells. Throughout the 1940s, Aboriginal scouts were employed in the American pipeline project Cannell, though they were never employed on the drilling rigs. Now, though, the world and Canada in particular is coming around to, and doing the right thing, uh, doing business the right way. And you have to involve stakeholders in the land. And in the Northwest Territories, the primary stakeholder is Aboriginal groups. And we just feel that it's the right way to do business, to involve our partners. Akita puts a new face on partnerships with Aboriginal groups, offering equity-based joint venture partnerships from Alaska to Canada's West Coast. We have uh, eight Aboriginal joint ventures. The first one was created in 1983, that's the year before the Inuvialuit final agreement, Akita Kutak, and uh, we're celebrating our 25th anniversary this year. These long-standing partnerships embody a shared approach to drilling, with stakeholders in the land invited to become shareholders in the profits. Following in the footsteps of Imperial Oil's discovery of Devonian reefs in the Northwest Territories, was the discovery of Devonian reefs in central Alberta. Drilling experienced yet another boom. Hundreds of rigs dotted the central Alberta landscape, most of them using rotary drilling, which had come to replace the earlier cable tool rigs. Akita now continues to push the boundaries of technology, looking for ways to drill holes safer and faster. Over the years, um, our customers have expected uh, from Akita and uh, in particular and from industry I guess in general to um, 
you know, to be able to provide the latest technology available. You know, I remember uh, sitting and, and listening to people uh, talk about how they move tubulars just from, from the catwalk to the drill floor. And anybody in the drilling industry will tell you that the catwalk is the most, one of the highest danger points. And now we have machines that do it for us. When we have a rig like Rig 6, we have a top drive, so we don't have a Kelly. We have a, a Davies wrench or a little iron roughneck that replaces the, the manual tongs. You'll have seen where the driller can manipulate the wrench and make the connections up. The pipe is actually delivered and presented in a way that the rest of the rig all interfaces to that pipe and almost removes all of the people from the activity. These innovations not only put people out of harm's way, they lead to faster, more efficient drilling techniques like casing drilling. Traditionally, you drill wells with drill pipe. That's the very traditional method. And with casing, we have a very large diameter pipe relative to drill pipe. We are drilling with the casing that ultimately would be cemented in place. So one of the things that we save time in is the ability to casing drill, TD the well, and go right to a cementing operation. With the strong price of oil, drilling for heavy oil in SAG-D markets provides another opportunity for technology to lead profitability. Alberta now sits on one of the world's largest oil reserves, and Akita is at the forefront of the technology to reach it with its heavy oil pad rigs. With the derrick supported by hydraulics and an umbilical system that connects the rig to a central complex, rigs like Akita 28 dramatically speed up the process of reaching heavy oil. The old one I had before, it's a bigger setup and uh, it would take a lot more time tearing them out and rigging them up. These are pretty friendly. You know, usually drilling on these ones probably three to four days where the other ones are closer to a week. With these kinds of results, Akita's in-house engineering department successfully pushes the boundaries of technology, building on an industry tradition of innovation. In 1978, ATCO bought Thompson Enterprises. In 1993, after 15 years of drilling throughout North America, ATCO drilling became Akita drilling. With expertise in areas ranging from shallow gas to shale, from heavy oil to Arctic drilling, Akita is positioned for any cycle. We try to manage certain aspects of our business by preparing for the cyclical downturns like we are just going through right now uh, by having a stronger balance sheet uh, and not being constrained in what we do in the periods of weaker activity because we don't have the financial resources to do them. That's actually the really cool thing about Akita. It's like a small, large company. We have all these variety of drilling rigs. We've got all the factors. So if one area is slow, we're still diversified enough that we're going to continue to work in these other areas. Those areas include coal bed methane as well as deep gas, with promising potential in the shale regions of northeastern BC and Alberta. The future of the Akita tradition is held by a new generation of leadership. The younger generation is bright, eager, and got high expectations. So in some ways they're smarter, in other ways they have lots of different opportunities. This type of leadership that they exhibit uh, compared to the, the type of leadership that a, a person in that position would have exhibited 30 years ago is quite different. They place a lot more value on, on, uh, on employees as individuals. The people make the difference. If you have good people, you could put any nice, beautiful rig anywhere on any lease without the proper people and commitment, integrity and respect. You're not going to do well. The, the people make the difference. These people see the drilling industry not simply as putting holes in the ground, but building long-term relationships with customers. It's all about relationships. It's uh, growing a trust, uh, being able to trust one another, and then um, working f uh, on a basis of trust. Providing a better service for our customer is what's going to make them it more appealing for them to hire us. Uh, we have to try to be better than our competitors by providing a better customer service.
Akitav builds those relationships in the communities they serve. Well, I think it's important to be a good citizen in all communities if you're a business and we have an obligation to our employees and to the areas we work to, uh, to be sound citizens and uh, provide opportunity for those areas. And so the cycles continue. As the economy cycles with the industry, the drilling rig will continue drilling. With the best technologies, the most stable of partnerships, the strongest in leadership, Akita is well positioned for whatever the future holds. <laughs>